Hello, I'm Bob Allison, WB1GCM at the ARRL Laboratory. I'm going to show you what's coming up in the next product review. Well, here's Tokyo High Power's HL350 VDX. It's a 2 meter linear amplifier. Unlike the brick amplifiers we're mostly familiar with, this one is cooled by internal cooling fans. It's in the 300 watt class, 300 watts power output. Uh, with three different drive levels input. The drive levels available on the input for full power output are 10 watts, 25 watts, and 50 watts. The front panel has push buttons and LEDs. Here's the power switch up here. Now we can monitor your RF output in watts, uh, SWR indicator here on the second scale down, and that little black window there is your voltage range, your voltage. And if it's within there from your supply voltage, uh, you're in great shape. Now, speaking of supply voltage, it's important to remember that this amplifier draws about 42 amps, about up to that. And you're going to need a fairly hefty power supply, a 50 amp supply minimum. And if you're already using a radio that uses more than 8 amps, uh, along with this amplifier, you're going to have to consider an even higher powered, higher current uh, power supply, a 12 volt power supply. Now the other LEDs here are we have a RF preamps here, uh, we have a uh, plus 6 preamp and a plus 16 dB preamp. We can overcome some of that coax loss in the shack to get your signal strength a little higher. We also have an attenuator here and then those are nicely switched in and you can see which one is selected. You can also select a high and low power uh, full output power is just a little over 300 watts. If you hit the low power, it cuts it about in half. And of course we have the mode switch, SSB and FM. Uh, pushing it in uh, gives you the SSB mode. Uh, you can key this amplifier either with, either with RF sensing or with a key line. And this uh, adjusts the delay from when you stop talking. Uh, on the sideband mode, there's just a little bit of a lag there before the amplifier kicks off and it goes into receive. FM mode, the keying is instantaneous with either uh, RF keying or with the key line. And uh, let's take a look at the backside. Okay, here we go. Now, look, the connectors aren't labeled back here. There is a label underneath that tells you which one's which, but just be very careful. If you're not aware of where that label is, you'll be kind of confused. I was at first while testing this. So, but let's run through the connectors anyway. Here's your antenna connection here. Your transmitter, your transceiver gets hooked up here. Here's your DC power connection. I like this because these are protected uh, with these little ears here. This is your drive level switch. There's three drive uh, settings for this amplifier. First switch is the 10 watt position, a zero to 10 watts. And by the way, the RF sensing relay that keys the amplifier kicks in at about 650 milliwatts. So you could even drive this amplifier with a one watt handy talkie if you wanted to. The 25 watt position is in the middle and 50 watts, and that's on that side. Um, this is your uh, accessory plug right here, and also your keying plug, your key line or remote plug for uh, connecting to your transceivers. Well, I now have the amplifier hooked up to a 2 meter FM radio. Uh, it puts out 25 watts, and let's see how the amplifier does. I'll key the microphone, and just a little bit over 300 watts. I'm using the 100. Uh, the 1000 watt slug on the bird meter here. And the uh, SWR on the antenna on the roof uh, looks like about 1.25. I like that. And the voltage is hanging in there just fine at full power output. Quite an impressive amplifier. But don't forget, always work on your antenna system first. You'll get a lot more gain by improving your antenna on two meters than you can with an amplifier alone. I'm Bob Allison, WB1GCM, ARRL test engineer here at the ARRL laboratory.